Hello everyone and welcome to my review for Kangen Omega Chapter 121. Before I get into this week's review, I of course have to mention my subscriber goal for 2021 hitting 5,000 by the end of the year. We've got 1,498 to go, so if you're already a fan of the channel and you're not subscribed, you might as well time to reach that goal. The other thing is my Patreon. Since it's the start of the video, it's time to give a shout out to my wonderful patrons. Special thanks to Fuse, Neo, Dijon Redden, Honey Mustard, Zach Rowitz, K-God, Chris Redfield, Scratch23, Moonshadow935, Rat, Ryzen 4K, and Artist. Thank you all very much for supporting me on Patreon. I greatly appreciate it. And if you too want to get a shout out at the start of videos or access to reviews for solo leveling in the boxer, you can always become a patron as well. There's a link to my Patreon down in the description. With that out of the way, let's get on with the review. We have an extremely exciting chapter this week uh, with a few important things to talk about. Um, first off, the majority of this chapter is the start of Wakatsuki versus Fei, and it's off to a pretty good start so far. Uh, I'm liking where it's going. Seems like it's going to be much better than the last match we just saw, so that's a good sign. Uh, the one big thing that I noticed, uh, that is actually pointed out in Shadow King summary, so I guess it's brought up in the chapter, is that Fei talks a lot. He doesn't stop talking. He's a real chatterbox. Whereas Waka really doesn't say anything. He tells Fei to save all of the talk for when he's in the infirmary after Waka beats him. So, pretty good comeback there from him. Um, but yeah, Fei seems to be very chatty just throughout the whole fight, kind of like he doesn't seem to take it very seriously. It's like these are some kind of social event for him. I think in the last chapter he brings up this being like a festival, which is kind of the same thing Nicholas said. Maybe that's why they got along, is because they don't really take this stuff super seriously. Um, we get some information about Agito, um, because no one here knows what Tai Chi Chuan is. No one here has heard of it, even Agito, who knows like all martial arts, kind of. Um, not really, but he's he's an expert on martial arts, so he probably knows just about every martial art that there is. Um, so the fact that he he has never heard of Tai Chi Chuan says a lot, um, but he reveals that he's actually from mainland China, which a lot of people had figured since the Gu ritual was in China. It's not very likely they'd be going over to Japan to get people to do the Gu ritual. Uh, so that's just an interesting detail. And as Misasa brings up, it is interesting to see that Agito is finally opening up about his past. Um, probably has something to do with the character development he's gotten over the last two years, which I'm still salty that we didn't get to see any flashbacks of during his fight with Lu Tien. Um, but anyway, we have Lolong talking about full contact karate, which is what Waka does. Uh, and then we get into the fight itself, and we get a few very interesting feats in this fight. First off, Fei tries to dislocate Waka's shoulder after parrying his first strike, and it doesn't work, of course, because Waka is too thick. His muscle is too dense. He can't get through it. Um, so Waka responds by getting a hook in on Fei's side, and somehow Faye's internal organs do not explode when this happens. And Okubo explains this as him redirecting the impact at last minute. Um, so, yeah, this is Nico-style bullshittery. This, this moment alone basically confirms that Faye is the tiger's vessel. I don't feel like there's really much else in the way of redirection stuff that would stop one of Waka's punches from just fucking destroying their kidney. Uh, I mean, that was how Oma avoided his internal organs bursting, was using adamantine kata. Uh, but it seems like Faye's using redirection here. Um, so pretty much everyone on the Kengen side is saying that Wakatsuki is way stronger than Faye, and that this is going to be over very soon, assuming Faye isn't hiding anything. But, well, what the fuck do we have here? Faye's doing more than just Tai Chi, which is good because, um... I think I've brought this up before, but Tai Chi is bullshit. Tai Chi is not a real martial art. Tai Chi is very good for doing like an exercise regimen, but it's a shit martial art. It sucks. So the idea that Fei would be 
someone who is really strong in purgatory just using tai chi would probably be one of the less believable things in kengen so he does more than just tai chi he does judo he manages to judo throw waka which is very impressive considering how heavy waka is um then he uses kickboxing footwork and he even knows some jujitsu um now he follows up this judo throw on waka by kicking him in the back of the head and it seems like Waka was going to get knocked out by this. That's what usually happens when someone gets kicked in the back of the head. But no, he just does it because he's Waka. Uh, so that's pretty cool to see. Uh, and Faye explains that the bare minimum for these kind of spectator fights is knowing jujitsu, kickboxing, and MMA. So Faye actually seems to be like kind of a, uh, a jack of all trades, maybe. He, he seems to be fairly well rounded, even though redirection and soft techniques kind of seem like something that he's going to be very good at. He does know a bunch of other stuff too. So that's actually pretty cool to see that he is specialized in a bunch of martial arts. And jujitsu, kickboxing, MMA, judo, these are all real, very efficient martial arts. When you have a list of some of the best martial arts in real life, those are on the list. Uh, so I like that that actually lends some kind of... Uh, real factor to this that this isn't like super fantastical that yeah Faye would be a pretty good fighter if he was very versed in all of these martial arts um so that's pretty cool now to get to the biggest part of this chapter tiger nico is alive he killed all the guards in this monitor room and he's watching the fights so yeah tiger nico's here he says it's time for the final act to begin and this, I feel also, is, is confirmation that Faye's the Tiger's Vessel. I don't think we would see Tiger Nico watching this match if Faye weren't the Tiger's Vessel. Because why would he care? Wouldn't he show up during the Liu fight? Wouldn't he show up when Liu Tien was fighting Aguido since he was a direct student of Tiger Nico? No, because he's not the Tiger's Vessel. So if Faye... Uh, Faye seems a little young to be an actual Nico, so he's probably another one of Tiger Nico's students, most likely. Um, so, it would make sense that he showed up to watch the match of the Tiger's Vessel. Uh, and I really like that in this match so far, uh, really in this chapter, we seem to be confirming that Faye is the Tiger's Vessel without him just, like, opening up and saying, Oh yeah, I'm the Tiger's Vessel. Uh, I expect him to say that at some point, but, like, I don't think Waka would know what that is, so it would mean next to nothing to him. It's like, ah, yes, I am I am the Tiger's Vessel, the inheritor of the Nico style, and Waka would be like, I have no fucking idea what you're talking about. Can, can we please get back to the match now? Um, now... Tiger Nico being alive is kind of a big deal because according to Oma's Nico, he was dead, but I don't think anyone really believed that. He's also one of the most influential characters in the whole series because he's the person responsible for Agito being the way he is now. Uh, he's responsible, in a way, for Oma's master, his Nico being dead, uh, and Oma having advance. Uh, training Kiryu to use Fallen Demon. He's a very important guy. He's also super definitely very high tier. Either him or Edward. I've also heard Joji is like, is stupidly strong. Um, these are probably the three strongest guys in the building right now. Um, and the fact that he is here and he has killed people leads even more credence to the idea that we are going to have some kind of big tournament interrupting thing happen. Um, some kind of worm attack, like the coup during the Annihilation Tournament. Um, we're going to have someone fighting Tiger Nico. We're going to have people fighting Eddie. We're going to see something happen with Kiryu. Muteba's going to try and assassinate someone, God knows who. Um, things are going to get crazy. Now the question is, is that going to happen after this match is over? Or after the last match? Is we still don't know if there's going to be a tiebreaker, so maybe if there's a tiebreaker after the 13th. If not, maybe they go after this fight. Maybe if Faye wins, uh, that's the cue to start a real shit show. Um, who knows? Uh, and on the topic of that, I have no idea who's going to win this fight. 
I'm leaning more towards Waka because I like the idea of him having learned to overcome the techniques of the Nico style. He would obviously try to learn and overcome the techniques Oma used to beat him last time. Because that's what he did with Agito. He lost for the first time against Agito. He lost terribly against Agito. Uh, and he developed Blast Course specifically to beat Agito. So I find it extremely likely. Um, I, I would find it amazing if he didn't find some way to try and counteract Nico style techniques, especially Demon's Bane. Um, but then again, Faye is the Tiger's Vessel. I say with 99% certainty. Um, so he's going to be super strong as well. And it's very likely that he beats Waka to show how strong he is. Um, but I I think I, I, if I had to bet money, I would put money on Waka. Uh, so I guess we're just going to have to see how this turns out from there. So with that, that's all I have to say for this week's review. If you enjoyed, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and click that notification bell so you don't miss any of my uploads. I do Kangen Omega chapter reviews every week. If you enjoy other series such as Jujutsu Kaisen, Record of Ragnarok, Chainsaw Man, and Bleach, I do videos on those series as well, so if you're interested in those, you should definitely check out my channel. If you enjoy discussing King and Omega with other people, or you just enjoy the content I produce on this channel, I highly suggest you check out my Discord server. I have a link to that down in the description. And of course, if you want to help support me and the channel directly, while also getting access to reviews for Solo Leveling and The Boxer, you can always become a patron. There's a link to my Patreon down in the description. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys around. Take care.